Hello everyone, welcome to our first tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to be an introduction on what to do in order to have vehicles in Postscriptum following the new uh, overhaul that is going to release in the next few weeks, hopefully. Uh, so this is everything you'll need to know to be ready when the SDK updates. So in this intro we are going to cover uh, everything that you need to export from 3ds Max into the engine. We're not going to cover the um, the export too much. Um, what I will tell you is we will provide you with all the files you need, all the documentation. So it is in the community drive. You have that link in the modding discord and I will also put it in the description down below. So um, when you go onto the community resource, uh, you will go in SDK and then you will go into vehicle overhaul. And in here you have a bunch of checklists some guide on how to export your assets from Max to Unreal Engine, some documentation explaining every single parameters of the new vehicle system from components to seating to projectiles and animation, and a World War II penetration value guide that I find online that I think is very valuable so you can have a quick look at it if you want to, it's very interesting. And 3ds Max files, we will deliver, um, well, it's already available now. So if you want to head there and you will be able to download those three 3ds Max files, we have the rig, we have the collision file, and we have the rec file. So I will show you these in a minute. And we have the armor values file. This one I will cover a little bit later on. And we have a few textures. So if you want to have the model to look right in the editor, you will need those for textures, at least for the Sherman. So let's get right into it. For this tutorial, we are going to set up the um, King Tiger. Uh, this is a vehicle that we haven't yet set up in the engine. So we are going to go through the entire process together. And I haven't fixed some issues that were on the static. So um, the reason behind it is I want to see, uh, and I want to show you the kind of mistakes you are very likely to run into and how to fix them. So this is a vehicle that we will rig together. I've never done it yet. So let's look at the files we've provided um, as an example for your rigger and your modelers. So the first file is the Sherman M4A uh, A3E8. Uh, that is a SK, so it's a skeleton mesh. And in that file, it's the 3ds Max 2020 file. So if you are on another version, like an earlier version, that will not work. You will need to be at least on Max 2020 to be able to open that file. You can see that I've added as much description as I could for every type of, uh, of mesh that you can find in here, just to understand why it's here, how it's done, and how it needs to be exported. In most of our cases, you will have to move the timeline to a frame because every time you export an object, it needs to be at zero world position. And then as you can see, it gets a little bit messy. So I've just made a basic keyframe from zero to one. And yes, when you're on frame one, you can see that all my external components are properly attached to my Sherman. So let's go through that file really quick. Uh, I will go into wireframe mode by pressing F4. And you can see that all the meshes that are gray, uh, gray color, are the meshes that we use as a skeleton. Everything that is orange is everything that we will use as external cosmetic or as effects meshes. And everything that is red is either the root bone, so this one is the bone controlling the entire tank, or if it's a box, then it's a UCX volume. So UCX are used for collision. Uh, the, you don't have to make those colors. It's just easier for us to know what is what. So first thing you need to do is how do we export the, the Sherman? So um, to export the rig, you double click on the red dot, on the red root, sorry, and red and select the chassis wheels and turret. So I'm gonna double click this guy. Double clicking allows uh, you to select all the children directly. And then you can see that the mesh still needs to be selected. So that would be me uh, having, my, that's all I need for my rig. And then I would export this. I'm not going to export it because I have already done so. But if you go into the vehicle overhaul on the community drive, you have a 3ds Max to Unreal export settings. And this document, it's basic like Google Doc and it says blah, 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 to export a tank, do this, do that. Here you have all the settings that you need to have checked or unchecked in the animation case. 
and then it tells you how to export uh, to import your FBX to Unreal Engine. Da, da, da. And here you see you have to click this, 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 this. So yes, when you're ready to import or export and import your rig, go through that document. It will tell you everything you need to know. And if the import is proper, it will look like this. Let's get back to our file. So this is my rig. I'm gonna move on to the next stage. The next stage is ex the, the external cosmetic. So the external cosmetic is everything that is attached on the tank that can be shot out of the tank. So it can be wooden logs, tracks, tools, etc. etc. It could be anything you want. In some case it can provide additional armor, it can provide some um, some more uh, resistance to um, projectiles like bazooka in some tank you would have skirts on the side and that would trigger the bazooka so the shell would not go inside the tank and it could also provide absolutely nothing like this little bit of tarp is good for nothing it just looks good when it flies off and that's it, it's good to make the game more alive so depending on what kind of cosmetic uh, if the cosmetic is attached to the turret like this it's good to make the pivot point at the exact location of that bone. The reason is when you're going to drag and drop, you're just going to attach it to the turret and then when the turret rotates, it will rotate the proper way like this. So it will rotate together. So it's it's always good to put the pivot point in a smart place. So for, for turret assets, we like to put the bone on the, the pivot point on the bone turret traverse. Turret traverse, yes. And for those, the one on the side, sometimes the pivot point is like center of mass, but it's not exactly center of mass. It's center of mass, but with a clean value of 30, 140, and 150. Because if I look at the real center of mass, it should be like a bastard value here. And then that will make the life of whoever is going to import the mesh and put it in the blueprint is going to make his life miserable because he will never figure those exact values. So it's better to have a nice and clean value. That way the programmer will just snap it into place because in this case, it needs to be exactly in place in order to be into those little hooks. So yes, it's always good to have a nice and clean pivot point here. Let's move on. So that is for all the cosmetic, but when you are ready to export it, to export that asset, always export it from zero world position. Because if you export it from that location, then the pivot point is going to be the world origin, which is not always good. Let's move on. Then we have this little guy. This little guy is the mesh that is going to go through here and it's going to repeat countless times all across the wheel. So this is the track seg. So we call it SM underscore track seg. And this mesh should not have a box collision in the editor. I will show you this in a minute. Then we have this mesh. When the track is dead, this mesh is going to sit on top here and just wait for you to repair it. Again, it's nice to use a nice and clean pivot point. So that way it's very easy to snap into, look, into position and the programmer is not going to spend ages trying to find the proper place. Then we have this little guy. It's Almost the same as this. Modeling wise, it is exactly the same, but this one is going to be used as an FX. So it's called SMFX Track Seg. So if I blow up that track, that little guy is going to fly off and fall to the ground. And in order to fall to the ground, it needs to have a box collision. So that is the only difference between this guy and this guy is this one has no collision. This one has a box collision, a very small box that would be around the track here. And again, here we have a lot of effects assets. So these are when I shoot this and then uh, its health is dead, it's going to hide and spawn some effects. And these are going to spawn into place here and then fall to the ground and roll over. So we have to export every external cosmetic as a single object so they can fly off separately. And again, when we export all of these, we export them from zero world position. So that is your skeleton mesh. Let's move on to the collision mesh. I'm gonna unhide everything. Move to frame 20. Okay, now we can see what's what. So everything red, as we said before, is the UCX. So the UCX is the collision made uh, exclusively to stop the infantry. So when you climb on it, the, um, this volume is going to affect your infantrymen. 
This is not for collision with trees or with the terrain or with the bullets or with any kind of projectile. It is just for the infantry. So let me hide everything red so we can see a bit clearly what's up. Okay, so now we have this mesh. Let's start with him. I'm going to isolate it. And you see it's a black and white mesh. It goes from a, a, a light shade of gray to a dark shade of gray. The reason is the lighter the color, the thicker the armor. So basically we have this material added on and it goes from five millimeter of thickness all the way down to 225 millimeter of thickness. And that allows us to apply a value on each polygon and telling it uh, the actual thickness for the projectile to be simulated on. So this mesh is pretty much just the, the outer shell. We keep the sprocket, we keep the wheel because when the shell is going to hit, it's going to simulate the first surface, the second surface, and then to the armor, and then can it penetrate it? Can it penetrate in, yes or no? And then when it's inside, another computation happens. So that is the external mesh. And then come with the UCX and then come the interior mesh. So the interior mesh is literally, as you imagine, just the interior like this. So what happens is, let me do a little bit of drawing. My projectile is going to come like this, hit the side, uh, is really fast, really powerful. Then it's going to penetrate and go inside the hull. So basically when you're inside the hull, you switch, the simulation will switch. So this is the same projectile. The simulation will switch to the interior mesh and then the, me the projectile is going to keep going with more or less of a bounce based on the angle. And then it's going to hit the other wall here and then it's going to check the thickness of that wall here. And am I fast enough? Can I go through? Yes or no? If I can't go through, then I'm going to put some projectiles going inside back to the crew. And if I'm fast enough, I can literally go straight through the mesh and keep going my life and then maybe hit the ground and bounce one last time. So this is why we have the internal mesh. The internal mesh is what happens after I penetrated the outside, what's behind it. And again, here we have armor values to, to, to that mesh. And same process, let me hide everything that is red. Same thing for the cannon. We have the cannon. This is 90 millimeter thick. This is 50 millimeter thick, etc., etc. Same for the turret. We have the external mesh. And then we have the internal mesh in the exact same way. Let me make this a bit more clear. Back fist calling. Yeah, there we go. So that is the mesh. This one is just the interior. And then we have the components. Uh, we have many components. We have the turret ring. We have the transmission, the sorry, wheels and suspension. It's the same thing. So if you damage the wheel or if you damage the track, it is the same component. We decided not to split this in two. Uh, then we have the transmission mesh right here, a basic mesh. Then we have some ammo racks here as basic boxes. Then we have a custom fuel tank mesh for the right one for the left, one for the right. We only export one and then we just flip it. So we don't have two meshes. And if it's a box like the ammo rack, we usually do not export it. We just use a basic box inside Unreal Engine. One thing to note is the Canon, uh, the SM component Canon is a mesh that if I'm going to duplicate it just for my example, if I align it to this, the pivot point needs to be Oh, okay, that's it. We just caught a mistake. So that's good that we have a mistake. So you can actually understand what's wrong. The idea is this guy pivot point should be the bone cannon elevation from the rig. That way I can just snap it into place. And then that is its actual rotation. And this component should actually be here. So I'm just going to fix the pivot point to match this little guy. Okay, now it's correct. And one thing to keep in mind, it says must be smaller than the outer mesh by at least three centimeters. This one is very important is if you look at this mesh, you see that the cannon is three centimeter inside the actual cannon. The reason is when the shell is going to collide with the, with the cannon. So let's say my shell is coming like this, hitting this, and then it goes inside 
and then it's going to hit the component here. We need a bit of brazing room here. That is for technical reason. It is just for the check. If it's too close to the outer shell, the check is going to fail and the cannon is not going to be destroyed. But that is purely technical. That has nothing to do with realism in any way. But yeah, keep in mind, we need a little bit of space between the cannon and the outer shell. Oh, I'm going to delete this guy. So this one is wrong. The pivot point should be the same as this little guy here. So I will let you guys to fix that when you do your own tank. And we also have the periscope mesh, which is a cube, a basic box. So this one we do not export. We do it um, in, in Unreal Engine with a regular box. The only time we export a periscope uh, mesh is in this case, when we have multiple windows, we have one, two, three, four, five, six windows. Then I make a custom mesh here. Let me show you how that would look. Um, vehicle new, US Sherman, statics here yes so it would look like this a basic mesh it's just so it's only one object and not six boxes okay so that was a collision mesh and then let's quickly go over the rec mesh i'm not going to save this rec okay so this is a rec mesh move to frame 20 again okay so what we need here we need our destroyed mesh with no tracks at all. All the tracks are gone. And um, yeah, basically our destroyed mesh, you can see that the hatches are gone. Uh, I will explain this in a second. And then we have a UCX volume around it for the collision uh, with the infantry. So that's one part. Then we have the second part, which is the turret. The bone is again at the proper position um, to follow the, the bone from the rig, the pivot point. And if I remove the UCX, you can see no hatches as well. The reason why the hatches are exported separately is when there is a big explosion, we want those hatches to, because of the overpressure, to just fly off and then bounce on the ground. So we export all them, all of them uh, separately. And the pivot point should always be at the hinge location so we can do this and then poof, they will explode off. So that's what we do, and the UCX here. Oh shit, and I hold, yes. And those should only have like really basic box collision that you can make directly into Unreal Engine or you can make UCX in 3ds Max up to you. So yeah, that is all you need to do. And when all of this is ready, you can export it. So again, remember when you export, export it at zero world position. Don't export it when it's up there because then the object is going to be up there. Okay. So let's get to 3ds Max and let's do our sanity check. So um, in order to know what to do, we can go into a technical checklist. So this checklist is pretty much everything you need to do in order to have a complete tank. When you're done with this checklist, technically the game, sh the, the game, the the vehicle should be good to go. And then there is the QA checklist. So the QA checklist is everything you need to check in order that the vehicle is actually complete so it can be done by someone else like QA. I'm going to open my King Tiger skeleton here. Okay, so this is the file that was provided to me uh, by the modeling team. So you see they make the collision directly into Unreal into 3S Max. That is up to you. This guy does not require collision, so I'm going to delete the collision right now. And we can see this tank should cover pretty much every scenario. Like we have side skirts we ha that can fly off. We have external cosmetic that can be destroyed. We have some, some yeah, pretty much everything. We have the hull gun. We have the coaxial. We have opening hatches like this that actually go up and then rotate. So um, this tank should cover pretty much every scenario that we'll need on top down of being just badass. Um, okay, so the technical. Sanity check, E8 as ref. Yes, yeah, so the um, Sherman E8 is the first tank we've done with a new system. So 
pretty much everything should be correct when you don't know how something should be just come over here and check a look have a look at that folder so make sure all statics have lots except armor mesh so i'm gonna go into my king tiger statics okay so all of my statics have been imported so now what i need to do is do they have lots except the armor mesh the armor mesh are the black and white meshes like this interior exterior and we have the exterior that's the interior and that's the exterior so those we don't need lots it's not needed so okay let's look at the first thing so we have the tracks on the turrets do they have a lot they have a lot okay do they have collision they have collision basic box collision so this is correct and then you would literally check every single asset one by one do they have lot yes do they have box collision yes and then you would move on so you go through all the objects the components um, this is the fuel tank they shouldn't have any collision so that's good no collision you don't see any green volume around and they shouldn't have lots because these are not needed then we have the hatch all the sm effects so those are all the um, all the meshes that are going to fly off my tank uh, like the skirt can fly off the tank this can be destroyed this can be destroyed we have a single shovel that's going to fly off etc etc and then we have a that's the wreck mesh so um, the wreck mesh should actually not have the skirts so this is not correct because when there's an explosion you would imagine the skirts to fly off so i'm going to re-export this mesh without the skirts later on and it's using the wrong material it should use the rec version of the material so i'm just going to edit this guy use the rec and then the body to rec okay now that's the burn down version i'm going to save this and it should have collision yes and should have lod's it have lod's great so the only mistake with that mesh is the skirt should be off and it was using the wrong shader let's go back to my folder and let's look at the turret turret is correct it's the burn down mesh and i should have collision i have collision and i should have lod's i have lod's okay so basically this tank is ready to go into blueprint and that will take us to the next video so i'll see you there